Leo Rising's December 2022 is a big future-oriented month. You are focusing a lot on investing in your future and also building your career. It's a big focus for this month. It's an outward focus month. If you're excited to dive into how this December 2022, the last rising sign video of this year is going to play out in your life, do make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you are always updated for what the stars have in store for you. If you're new here, welcome, I'm Marin. In this video, I'm using the tropical zodiac and whole sign houses as I'm using Western astrology techniques, particularly ancient Hellenistic. And if you would like to look into my courses or reading availability, I will have those linked down below. Might be booked up, might not be open right now, but I will have things that you can check into if you'd like to learn more. From the first to the second, we start out the month with Mercury in your fifth house, squaring Neptune in your eighth house. So there's a lot of talk in the beginning of the month about something really fun in your life. A big focus is either your romantic relationship or something creative you're working on, but financially there's some confusion. You might be being misled or told something too good to be true. Then on the first as well, Venus in your fifth house will oppose Mars in your 11th house. This can show tension between working on something creatively and the perception of that thing by a greater audience. So it looks like your perspective is going up against a greater force that does not really approve of it. On the fourth, Venus in your fifth house will score Neptune in your eighth house. It shows that you are probably having a nice either romantic relationship or working on something creatively, but the financial confusion is making things very gray. You're not sure where the finances stand on this. On the seventh, we have a full moon in Gemini, and this is a pretty aggressive full moon. It's conjunct Mars exactly. Now, this is happening in your 11th house of socializing audience or larger networks, so it could be a pretty sudden ending or letting go from some people that you're affiliated with or suddenly breaking ties from a group that you're used to being a part of. On the 8th, the sun in your 5th house will oppose Mars in your 11th house. So again, focus on something creative or romantic is leading to friction with a larger group. There's a larger group not approving of you. Then on the 9th, Venus enters your Capricorn 6th house. This is starting the series of planets entering your 6th house of physical health, things like working out, dieting, not dieting, but like what you're eating, maybe dieting, maybe not, um, working out, eating, um, even coworkers or people that you're seeing on a day-to-day -day basis at work. That is what the sixth house is. So it shows Venus there. You're either improving your health, you're improving your uh, workout or your health routine, or you're getting along really well with your coworkers starting the middle of the month onward. Then from the 14th to the 15th, the sun in your fifth house will score Neptune in your eighth house. This again is showing that focus on your creative project or your romantic relationship is involving some financial inconsistency or gray area. And from the 17th to the 18th, Mercury in your sixth house will try Uranus in your 10th house. This shows that communicating with coworkers or about your health is actually suddenly benefiting your career a lot. And those two things are connecting very positively. Then on the 20th, Jupiter re-enters your Aries ninth house. This is showing that expansion, growth, and optimism is returning to your ninth house of foreign travel or higher education. It was there over the summer. Maybe you learned something new, explored something educational, or you went traveling extensively. This will be re-emerging to start off this next year really amazingly. On the 21st to the 22nd, the sun in your Capricorn sixth house will square Jupiter in your Aries ninth house. This is again showing that uh, really positively what you're working on on a daily basis, either with health or with your coworkers is expanding your horizons and possibly leading to greater travel opportunities. Then on the 22nd, Venus in your sixth house will try Uranus in your 10th house. This is great, again, for workers or people that you're working around or your health really benefiting your career suddenly. Those two things are really strong end of the month. And on the 23rd, there is a new moon in your Capricorn sixth house. A great new beginning to something very abundant, something very grounded, something very tangible in your sixth house of physical health or coworkers. Two main things that are getting a new beginning could be also like who you're working around, but there's a new beginning there somewhat. And on the 29th, Mercury will station retrograde in your Capricorn sixth house. This is a uh, period of a little bit of difficulty, maybe not the worst in the world, but there is some uh, challenge when it comes to communicating with coworkers or communicating with uh, people that you're working on, like working out, things like that. Could be rethinking that, could be some communication difficulties. Finally, we end the month on the 31st with Venus conjoining Pluto in your Capricorn sixth house. This is showing very, very intense, very powerful energy around values in your sixth house. So it could be a very intense coworker relationship or a very intense obsession with health that emerges under the month. Um, it's not bad per se, but it is very intense and it does involve intensity around values at the end of the month.
If you have any thoughts or comments you want to share about how this December sounds for your life, do let me know down below. I read almost everything that I can um, on the subways, usually my comment reading time, and I'm always interested in hearing about how this is showing up in your life. So do let me know down below, and I hope that this is a fun month for you as I, I like the astrology of this month. I'm excited for it. Now a tarot card for our Leo Risings here. We have the Nine of Swords. Now, this is actually called the Lord of Cruelty. It's usually aggressive mental thoughts or worries. This is not something that is actually happening. This is in your head. Not that that's not real, but I mean, it's not something that's actually happening viscerally externally. This is something that is internal, that there's a worry, that there is an anxiety. So it is showing that if you're worried about something, it's not external, that that is not going to happen it is in your head, not to discount the feeling. I'm not invalidating it, but know that if there's some worries, it's in your head. Crazy to think that it was just a few years ago, alone in my NYU dorm room that I was filming like 2017, 2018. I don't know if I was, I don't remember the exact videos, but like that was me back then and this is me today, 2022. So a uh, small world. I will see you in the next one though, next year technically. Uh, take care.